please rise for the procession of the cross.
God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That amid the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Foremost. 
But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the words of life. Thanks be to God.
and we had muddied the waters because we're no smarter than those dumb sheep I was talking about earlier. He comes out after us anyhow. God promised to gather them together when they had been scattered on a cloudy, gloomy day. To the first hearers of the words of Ezekiel, this must have been a great comfort. They had been exiled. They had been scattered by Nebuchadnezzar in the province of Babylon. To believers today, it is the promise of the church in which we are called together out of the world and fed on the rich pasture of God's word. In actuality, the promise then is the same as the promise is now. That the promise of the Good Shepherd to bring his people together to hear his word clearly and purely. And to give their lives which will please him in holiness. He speaks of lying in good pasture and grazing on the mountain heights of Israel. This is a life of abundance and purity. But it's the abundance in God's word and the purity that is in doctrine heard and in the lives lived by the people of God. The mountain heights are a figurative image. So as you get close to God in this world, that is what you're talking about. It is about this proximity to God as we listen to his word, as we are nourished by his body and his blood, as we are lifted up by Jesus. And then the prophet records one of the most beautiful and perhaps also the most terrifying visions of all of Scripture. The good shepherd promises to feed his flock and to lead them to rest. But then he says, I will seek the lost and bring back the scattered, bind up the broken and strengthen the sick. But then he says, I will I will separate the male goats and the rams from the sheep. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them with judgment. He will feed them with his displeasure and his eternal damnation. That's what judgment means. We've been studying the book of Revelation, and we begin to see a glimpse, we begin to see a small picture of what is in store for the last time. And it comes down to this. When Jesus comes again, all the dead will rise. Those that died in the faith, and those that did not. Everyone gets eternal life. It's just a matter of where you're going to be spending eternity. Will you be spending eternity in heaven with a God who loves you and cares for you and provides for every need? Or will you be spending it in hell? Where you are completely and totally se segregated from God. And left to suffer in a lake of eternal fire. The strong don't need any help, so they don't pray so much. The strong don't need any more power or knowledge, so they don't study much. The strong are wise and capable, so they don't let God's word or their faith interfere with their thinking or decision making. The strong have no compassion. They take care of themselves first and last. And if the truth be known, they care little about the other man. Spiritual pride and spiritual apathy mark the fat and the strong. Modern American Christianity is marked by spiritual pride and spiritual apathy. Spiritual pride is when you think you have it made and need no more. It rises when you feel confident that you are that missing worship and standing aloof from the rest of the church, from the fellowship of your fellow believers, isn't going to hurt you. 
and we see this time and time again. People, well, you know, I've got to take the kids to soccer practice, or to t-ball, or to this, or to that. I don't have time for church. They don't realize that your faith is a lot like a, a burning coal in a fire. That if a coal becomes separated from the rest of the coal, its heat begins to dissipate. It grows colder and colder until the flame that it had goes out. And it becomes dark and lifeless. That's one of the reasons that we find worship so important in our lives. We come here to be fed by God's Word. We come here to be fed through His body and blood. We come here to be served by God Himself to hear the assurances of His promises that He has made, the promises that He will keep, that promises that says that as a believer, when we go through that door called death, that we have nothing to fear. That on the other side of that door is eternal life. Eternal life with a loving God. An eternal life where every tear is wiped away. All sickness and illness and weakness and infirmity is taken from us. But on the other side of the coin, we have spiritual apathy. And in many ways, spiritual apathy is indistinguishable from spiritual pride. It looks the same. Both are somewhat inactive. Spiritual apathy, however, is inactive because we don't care. Spiritual apathy keeps people from Bible study. It isn't important. They don't care. They can't be bothered. We think about it. We go back to that coal analogy. Either way, spiritual pride or spiritual apathy, you stay in it too long and you end up being separated becoming one of the fat and strong who rely on themselves, who rely on their knowledge or their understanding or their judgment rather than relying on God himself and his word and his sacraments. Generally, we do little or even nothing to spread the word. We do nothing special to help build the church. Either the number of our congregation or even, you know, making repairs to the building. We do nothing except show up at worship. And it sounds like a recipe of spiritual pride and spiritual apathy. We come in and we're on autopilot. And it appears that we don't even care so. Even Jesus had made this point. Said that he, it is not those who are healthy that need a physician, but those who are sick. That he had come not to call the righteous, but sinners. But for those who have, who are sick, those who have the hurts and pains, those who have sinned and fear the coming of judgment that God has promised, <coughs> That's who Jesus came for. Now the good part of the message today is that God cared enough. God loved us enough that he sent his son to die on our behalf. And what that means for you and me is the slate of our sins, extensive as it is, is removed from us as the prophet Isaiah says, as far as the east is from the west. In our baptism, we absorb the righteousness of Christ. We are clothed with his righteousness. Something that we didn't deserve and we did not. But God gave it to us as a gift. Just as he gives us gifts to keep us strong in the faith, 
just as he keeps giving us his word when we come to church, when we hear his word in Bible study, when we get into his word in our homes with our family and friends, he keeps giving us, he keeps cajoling us to get into the word, to be closer to him, to rely on him. And sometimes, yes, he will put roadblocks or obstacles in your way just so you rely on him more. He's done it to me, and I know he's done it to you. Sometimes we need the old two-by-four across the head so he goes, do I have your attention now? Because I didn't get it before. And when we have those times, when we feel that God is against us, when we feel that God has abandoned us, when we feel that we're all alone, we're not. We're not all alone because God is there with us. He just wants the best for us and he wants to make sure that he has our attention, that we are his prime focus. And he wants us to focus on him. Don't worry about what you know. That's not going to get you to heaven. It's not going to, you're not going to get to heaven because of material blessing. You're not going to get to heaven because you were born on the right side of the track or the same, you know, you've been a Lutheran all your life. You're not going to get there because of that. You're going to get there because of your belief in Jesus and his promise that he will lead you home at the end of your life. As long as you believe. And we can't even believe on our own. It is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the gift of faith so we can believe. The only thing we can do in the whole equation of our salvation. One thing. We can reject God. That's it. We can't accept God. Because that is the Holy Spirit. We can only reject. And we thank God that He has called us to faith. We thank God because He is keeping His promise. He is keeping His promise because He does not want us to be among the fat and the strong. He wants us to be those sheep that He gathers up to bind them, to heal them, and to comfort them. We'll be more like that in heaven for all eternity. And it begins by hearing his word, receiving his gifts, and eating the food that he gives us. The good shepherd, he feeds and he heals, he finds and he strengthens, and he gives us forgiveness and eternal life. But the Good Shepherd does one other thing. He calls the flock. Those who don't want him, those who don't love him, those that don't need him any longer, the fat and the strong, he will destroy. Those are the two sides, the both real views of the same Good Shepherd. So allow the Spirit to work in you. Allow the Spirit to bring you to that Good Shepherd. To come to hear and to feed. <coughs> come and let Him guide you and lead you to rest. Let the Good Shepherd bind up your wounds and comfort your sorrow. Come to the Good Shepherd in the Word and Sacrament regularly. Come. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, 
God of God, light of light, every God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit for the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he arose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worship and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we worship God with our ties and honor. and those who bear the sword down on 
that sin and wickedness may be kept in faith, and that we may live peaceable lives in security. Lord, in your mercy, save and raise up those who are suffering and sick, especially Betty Romero, Vern Lake, Lila Briggers, Jason Palmer, Lee Mackowitz, Lori Brody, Marty Brody, and Doris Inouye. Lord, in your mercy, we praise you, Lord, for Maxima Silva and Ernesto Sanchez this week of their birthday. O oh, Holy Spirit, we praise you for Maxima Silva celebrating this week, rebirth and adoption to be a family of the church by your holy baptism. We thank you for another year of life together for Bud and Dee Gruber. Lord, in your mercy, grant, Lord, that all who come to the altar today to receive the heavenly manna of Christ's body and blood would be well salted with repentance and, and faith and would be at peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Who's right? The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you put so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give you thanks for your boundless love. Show it to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and the archangel and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, everyone praising you and singing. Likewise, when the supper ended, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks and praise. 
He gave it to them saying, take all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance for me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us in your salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in perfect love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his perfect peace. We see for our final word. Quick announcements. Uh, today, you know, over in the fellowship hall, we are going to be covering uh, one of the, um, the, the, what are we doing here? Oh, the origin of evil. And will evil reoccur after Jesus comes again? So, hope you'll be there. These are one of the side trips that we uh, said that we would have uh, during the study of Revelation. So uh, we'll uh, be doing that. Beast Pantry. Uh, Matt picked up all your donations and he's incredibly thankful. Uh, something happened this last week that was sort of incredible. Uh, the assistant uh, what I think we're call it now, uh, district administrator was touring Whittier High School and they showed uh, her the Beast Pantry. And she had several comments. First one was she couldn't believe a church of our size was so generous in helping their students. And she was very thankful for that. She's a member of Calvary Chapel. And she's trying to get her church to at least match what we've been doing. Second, she goes, well, looking at where you are and what you're doing and how much you have, we are going to find a new, larger space for you. We're going to make sure it's air-conditioned, and we're going to get you the racks and things that you need to store this stuff. So um, we, he was very, very uh, thrilled about that. And that's really because of the stuff that, of the generosity of this congregation. Um, let's see. Anything else? Any other words of wisdom or bits? And go in peace and have a blessed week.